Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop, and we have come quite far in the series, and I want to continue on, and as we do so, we're going to find these episodes get longer and longer if I were to go back and recover everything, so you're going to find these episodes start to roll up and briefly mention information so we can move forward, otherwise we're going to get stuck on talking about the same things forever. Uh, so in this episode, we're going to talk specifically about problem solving background textures. And I have an image here. I body painted Michaela over the weekend. I've been learning to body paint for two or three years now. And every time I do it, I learn something. So I try and do it as often as possible. And this was kind of my rendition of the uh, Black Widow Marvel character. So uh, pre-movie, because that hasn't come out yet. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I threw this background in so it would look a little more interesting. Uh, you can see the original one was shot just on a gray wall and we did some dodge and burn. So I wanna talk about what I did, then we're gonna talk about the problem solving aspects of this. So first of all, I have retouched the image and removed the bits and pieces so that it's acceptable on YouTube. Now I want to talk about the dodge and burn in here. And during my dodge and burn video, I discussed that dodge and burn was used a lot by me for problem solving. And in this case, there's a little bit of blotchiness with the texture in the body paint. And I wanted to do was remove that. Uh, so I did this uh, dodge and burn pass using the exact same technique we discussed in the video. Uh, here's my lighten and here's my darken. And I can show you these masks briefly. So these are all the parts that were lightened and uh, these are all the parts that were darkened. And you can see lightning to me takes a lot more time. So there's a lot more to dodge. And uh, this also includes the skin retouching aspects of this. So dodge and burn pass here to kind of even that out. And if I had any problems with the background, I would have handled that at the same time as I did this. The next one was the texture itself. So the texture comes in two pieces here. Well, the first is just the simple background and the second was the sparks. The trouble I'm having with this is that the background here, its tone and her tone are different enough that it looks like she's just standing in front of it. It's close but it's not quite believable. So I wanna talk about fixing that. That's really simple uh, in situations like this. So if I click on the background and I need to bring up the properties for um, the mask. And we've talked about masks in the past and masks are something that, you know, it's gonna take a lifetime for you to kind of master, but there's so many settings, there's so many ways to use them. But one of the more important ones is density. And density is basically taking this, instead of drawing black and white, which is what the mask looks like, by the way, um, we can make it gray. So as I lower the density here, you start to see, first of all, the thumbnail is starting to look more gray. So instead of being a pure black somewhere on this mask, it is simply a 54% version now. And you see her tone and the background tone are starting to look a lot better now. So I like the way this looks. It just looks a lot more natural. I have to be careful though, because if I drop this all the way to zero, she's way too orange and it just looks a little odd. Although it starts to look a little bit more comic book character-ish to me. Uh, so I, I really don't mind that. And I can correct that a bit by adding some uh, blue to my, say my post-production a bit. Uh, once I'm all done with this, I do one more pass where I do my color grading and my color grading may attempt to counter some of that. Uh, but in general, I kind of like to make it look good leaving Photoshop. Uh, the sparks, I didn't really do anything with the sparks. Uh, they're just simply the color they were. And then I added, uh, I did brighten them with another curve layer set to screen. We've talked about this trick. Instead of duplicating the layer, you simply add a curve and that acts the same as if you duplicated the layer. Again, if this is all new to you and you're looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you need to go back and watch the episode on texture application because we covered that in depth. So what the problem is with this image is there's a stark difference between the light background and her arm. And that is not what you probably expect to see. You should see a bit of a glow around these areas as if the, the brightness is passing in front of her, which of course isn't gonna happen, but it's, it's called bloom. And we need to make that in order to make this thing a little more uh, believable. So I need to do is borrow, um, again, a mask. I've created my masks as I talked about in the past. Uh, here's my mask. And rather than apply it, uh, I'm probably just gonna, well, I guess I could apply it. Let's do that. Let's just apply it. Uh, and I need to invert it because I want to draw outside of her body. Actually, I want to draw inside of her body. I'm wrong. Hit B for brush. I'm just gonna grab a yellow color here and uh, I want to paint on the layer 
And I'm just going to paint it 100% opacity here and kind of do something. And that's not looking right. We need to sample from the background. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm saying everywhere there's something bright next to her arm, I should see a little bit of bloom that passes in front of her. And I'll worry about the colors in a second, but I just want to kind of rough it in first of all. So this is what my, my mind thinks that I should see. Like there should just be a little bit of something, something that passes in front of her body because there's something bright behind her. So something like that. Now, another thing I really like in Photoshop is the fade command. And you can have to, you have to use it immediately after an application. So I want to glow down here. If I click it and put it in there, it's too strong. Immediately after applying something, you can do Control Shift F or Command Shift F and you get the fade command. By the way, just also up under edit and then here. And it'll say fade and then whatever your last thing was. So you can go and lower your last thing you did and only the last thing you did that way. If you do any other action, uh, dropping a marquee, uh, changing a selection, whatever, even changing tools I think will screw it up, then you can no longer fade. So, okay, so this looks okay, but I think we can use a blending mode and we're just gonna go and goof around here. And I think, um, I think this one is pretty decent. You know, I'm okay looking at all the different blending modes to see if there's one that works better than another. A linear light's not bad, but it looks too orange. And that's okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and add, I'm gonna add a solid color adjustment layer. This is another one I love to use. And it doesn't matter, really matter what color we pick. And I'm going to then create a clipping mask. That means that this orange color is applying only to this layer. So now we can go and we can apply a different color to this layer and work with the blending mode. So I like the way the blending mode looks in the skin. I just didn't like the color. And we goof with it until we like what we see. So something like that. And then I can get, I can drop the opacity if it's too strong. So there we go. I think that looks a lot more believable as the texture now kind of wraps around her body. And I may even do like a bit more. And again, I can just paint anywhere on this layer and it doesn't matter what color I paint in right now because the solid color adjustment layer is saying everything on that layer is going to be that color. So I can go ahead and add a little bit more of a wrap if I feel that, you know, it might help. Like here's an example, I missed this area completely. So I'm using the, the fuzzy edge of the brush. I'm not painting on her leg, I'm painting next to her leg and letting the fuzzy edge of the brush kind of work its way over. So this looks a little bit more believable. And I use this technique anytime there's a bright background behind somebody, it just makes it look more believable. So here. And again, there's a mask on this. So if we turn the mask off, you can see that it kind of creates a terrible situation for us on the background. We only want this effect to occur on her, not on the background. So if we were to just draw right across her, this is what it looked like. I'm just using the fuzzy edge of the brush to affect parts of the image that I think deserve this glow. And make it look like something like that. So I use this technique quite often. And this solid color adjustment layer, I use this a ton as well. And it's really nice because once you're done, you can go and change things. If you are a person who uses a watermark quite often, uh, this is a great way to adjust the color of your watermark by simply adding in uh, a solid color adjustment layer, clipping it to the watermark, uh, and then allowing you to move it around and change the color. Um, I watermark mine in Capture One. I don't do it in Photoshop here, but uh, either way will work. So I like this. I think this looks pretty believable. It helps it. It just looks better. If I look at it this way, it's just too stark of a contrast and your mind expects to see something there. At least I think so. So this helps me with believability. And uh, that's it. Now, if, if I don't like this and I need to do some changes to it, again, it's just a layer. It's not destructive. Uh, our, this, we're just painting on this layer here. And maybe when we're done, we're like, mm, maybe some of these areas need another layer, something else. So I can go in again, I can paint I need to borrow the same mask. If you hold on Alt or Option, you can actually duplicate the mask this way. And there's paint up here. We'll turn this to like screen, for example, so we can get a really bright spot. Maybe something like this. This uh, I don't know if I'm real happy with this, but I think having more than one layer there might help it look a little less muddy. Um, that is not what I want, but it's okay. We'll get it in there, and then we can drop the opacity of it until it looks a little better, something like that. Yeah, 
just a just a bit. So I think that looks pretty good. So it's just a bit of troubleshooting and how to make a background that has some bright spots look a little bit more legit as to when the bloom of the light will come across the object. Uh, this is not the best job in the world of this. Obviously, I'm making a video here to kind of show how I'm problem solving it. But this is how I would go about tackling this type of issue. And obviously, your results may vary. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And I'll continue to kick out episodes with uh, new and interesting challenges. So we unwrap bits of Photoshop and learn it the way that I wish it had been taught to me. Until next time, take care.